has the people who know the importance of following through, just as we have always followed through in time of world, national, and community need. We are proud of our record of getting big jobs, seemingly undoable jobs, done. It's a record unsurpassed by any city anywhere in the world. But not surprising when you consider that Detroit pools one of the world's greatest reservoirs of organizational talent. The kind of men the country and the community have called on before to move mountains and who ask only, where would you like them moved and by when? These men are attracted to Detroit by the unique demands of America's number one industry, the pivot point of the nation's economy. The kind of men who like nothing better than being told something can't be done because they've never done it before. I realize these are maybe the toughest set of negotiations the U.S. has faced in maybe 20 years. What are your hopes going into this? Do you have expectations? The UAW, even though these times are very difficult, is as strong as it's ever been. And uh, under the leadership of President Ryan Gettlefinger, we will deliver what we need to deliver to make sure that our memberships are secure. Um, you know, like the, the one brother said, that the two tier is very unpopular on the floor. Uh, and I know that that's not something that I don't think anything on that until the uh, until negotiations have started. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or if it's not going to be an issue. I'm probably not the right guy to interview, to be honest with you. Yeah. What about pensions? What about? Do you feel like we'll be able to hold the line on health care since they made concessions? I think under the under the leadership of Ryan Gettlefinger and, and Vice President Cal Rapson. We will do our very best to deliver a good contract. Thank you okay. very much. All right. Are you on the National Party? Yes, I am. UAW Ford. Thank you. Ford. UAW Ford. Um, this may be the toughest set of negotiations UAW has faced in how long have you been there? 40, 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. Is it the toughest you think of? Yes, yes, yes. It's definitely going to be the toughest we ever faced. Now, Ford seems to be in the worst position. Is it your thinking that you know you have less of a chance to, to win anything or to provide? Absolutely not, and I, and I think that that, from a media standpoint, that people feel that Ford is in the worst position. Uh -huh. um, from a leadership and being internal, I don't feel that Ford is in the worst of, of the bargaining positions. I think all of the, of the big three um, have the same um, feats up against them. Um, Health care is a big issue, um, and uh, protecting our members' jobs and, uh, and their wages. Um, so, no, I don't feel like Ford is an unfair advantage. However, uh, Ford is in the process of restructuring to become a smaller company. So with those challenges alone and, and, and reducing our workforce, that is a challenge. With, with the health care, because uh, Jim and Ford made concessions last year, do you think that maybe is off the table this year? Um, or will they want more? That's, I that's, know that's that, speculation. Yeah, that's speculation. Um, I, I wouldn't be shocked at anything that the company may propose. However, the union is prepared to defend um, our members' cost of living, our wages, and our health care is in the forefront. Um, I heard, uh, like the one brother said, the two tier is very unpopular on the floor. And I know it's, it's not preferable to anybody in the international league. Um, but like you said, protecting jobs and wages. So there's a balance. In order to save the jobs, well, we have to reduce wages for new workers. Going into negotiations, how do you think we can balance that, or you can balance that in negotiations? Do you think we'll have to compromise on it, two-tier? In negotiations, compromising is key if you want to be successful, to have a win-win strategy. However, um, at this time, I can't comment to what the UAW strategy going in. I'll tell you, however, that in the long term, especially understanding that numbers is key to our strength, if we have to have concessions in certain areas to guarantee long term, then we might have to consider it. Long-term strength. I'm not putting words in your mouth. Absolutely, that's what I see. Well, sometimes you have to 
take a step back in order, or to the side in order to move up. Very well said. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anything that you'd like to add, you know, your expectations going on? My expectations is only to be able to listen uh, what the members want us to deliver to the leadership team, to be able to come back with something that is very comparable to what we have today. Secondly, I, I, just for the public to understand that the union are not the uh, renegades, greedy, money-hungry people that the media sometimes hands us out to be that definitely we are in the forefront of leadership trying to help a company rebuild itself as well as maintain the integrity of our membership's livelihoods. Very good. Thank you. Very, very well said. I couldn't have said it no better.